Hey, and welcome back. It's Professor Hendricks, and today I'd like to talk to you about reading in large FASTA files. If you haven't seen my other video on reading FASTA files in general, please do. I created this script, um, read FASTA, and I've copied it over here. And this uses string concatenation, but what you'll find is that for a large FASTA file like a genome, it's extremely slow to do this. String concatenation, as it turns out, is relatively inefficient when you're dealing with this, this, this size of a file. So what we want to do is we want to modify this code so that it can be a little bit more efficient. Um, one of the first things I want to do is I want to show you the genome file that I've downloaded. I've actually got this from UCSC and I downloaded the chromosomes from Drosophila and concatenated them into one file that I called the M6, which is the name of that genome. And so you can see that it's a big wall of A's, G's, and T's, but also you have N's. These N's typically indicate a region that was not fully assembled. Um, it's an unknown. It's a, it's a wild card character that refers to that we don't know that particular portion of the genome because it's repetitive or because the, the reads were low quality. Um, probably re repetitive is my guess. So this file, if you want to get a sense of how big this file is, and this is a relatively compact genome, I can put ls-lh, l for long detailed information, and h for human readable format for the file size, and so that's 140 megabytes of space. One character is approximately a, um, or each, each base pair, each nucleotide is one character, which is one byte of information. However, there is something in a lot of uh, file systems where the file size is, uh, is done in powers of two rather than powers of 10. So uh, mega here doesn't directly translate to what we might expect in terms of megabases, but that gives a ballpark. So we're dealing with um, 100, over 100 million nucleotides here distributed over multiple chromosomes. So we have to think of an, a more effective way to read that. And the way I want to approach that is with join. And I also want to point out that I've done two things. And so I'm going to remove that and show you what I mean. So if I try to print, print out these def lines as I go and print def line, something like that. And if I try to run this, Python read FASTA DM6. I get these huge def lines. So the def lines are actually quite long. Um, really, the identifier, the unique identifier, is just this first part, this, in this case, this number. But it gets stuck here in this last one, which is X. So it gets stuck on chromosome X. And so there it is. There's the X. It's just basically hanging there because it's concatenating. So I'm going to put Control C to interrupt that. And I'm going to go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just split these def lines on on spaces and save the first term and I'll call that the the um, I'll call it the seek name how about that so I'll just do um, terms equals def line dot split and the default behavior for split is to split on spaces so I'll just leave it like that and I'm just gonna put how about this I'm gonna call it as I said I'll say seek name and set it equal to terms of zero and then I'm gonna print out seek name And run that, and so you can see these are the seek names that it identifies, and some unmapped, uh, you know, smaller broken contigs. And we hit that chromosome X again, and, and it just gets stuck. So now I'm going to go back, and so I'm going to replace defline hereafter with seek name, under the assumption that that's what I'm going to be using. I'm not using the whole defline. I'm just using that first identifier at the beginning called the seek name. So in Emacs, I can do escape percent. And then it puts at the bottom of the screen, query replace. And so I'll put def line. And I want to replace with seek name. And I'll go ahead and replace it here. And another thing that I did, I don't know if this is going to work, is I add, as I modified the print statement down here. So instead of printing out the entire um, sequence out, as I did before with the read FASTA, and if you again, if you haven't seen that video, please do watch it. Um, I'm going to print out the length. I'm going to print out the length of the, the sequence. I don't think I need to do all this extra business here. I think I could have easily just done something simple like the following print seek name len of sequences of seek name. So in other words, sequences of seek name will ultimately store the actual chromosome sequence, that, that long sequence of A's, C's, G's, and T's. I'm going to compute its length and print it out. 
I think that should work just like that. Um, and if not, we can modify it. And everything else looks good. But before I begin, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to close it, and I'm going to talk to you about join. Join is a method in Python or an attribute of strings. It's, it's a string method. And to illustrate how it works is if I had a delimiter, say, for example, like the, the character X, and I had a, a list of DNA sequences. So if I said, like, DNA list is my list of DNA sequences, and let's just say I have this thing, comma, this thing, I'm just putting some random strings of A's, C's, G's, and T's. And if I said X dot join of DNA list, what it's going to do is it's going to concatenate those DNA fragments and use the character X as the glue to append between them. And that obviously is not something you'd normally want to do. Really, you just want to concatenate them directly. For example, when I'm reading in this FASTA file, if you saw, it's a bunch of different lines separated by new lines in that file. And so the only way that I'm going to be able to do this is by concatenating them together. And so what I want to use as my delimiter is just the empty string. So if you recall that when we initialize a string, we just put those two single quotes together, and that basically does it. So in a weird way, the empty string is an object, and join is a method associated with that object that I can use to concatenate a list of strings and use this original string as the delimiter. So hopefully that's clear. That's going to be our approach. So I'm going to quit here, and I'm going to go back to the Emacs of that script. And what I want to do is I want to change this. Sequences will still be a dictionary, but instead of being a dictionary of strings, it'll be a dictionary of lists. So instead of initializing this as the empty string, I want to initialize it as a list. If you can like, you can either do the brackets or you can do something like list like this. And instead of concatenating to that string, I want to append to that list. So line.strip is exactly the thing that I want to append. So I'm going to put append, and I'm going to append to this list. Now, this may seem weird because I'm creating this sort of intermediate data structure, this dictionary of lists, before I actually get to the string. It seems like, why not just cut to the chase and just create the strings? But in the end, this is going to be much more efficient, and I think the efficiency comes in specifically how it implements lists using dynamic arrays, which are pretty efficient to um, dynamically allocate memory for as it grows. And strings may not have that functionality, and hence strings are going to be pretty inefficient to concatenate as, as it goes. So with that said, let's try this. And there's another thing I need to do. Right now I have a dictionary of lists still. The key will be the seek name that I've parsed out, and the value of the dictionary will be a list of strings. And it's a list of strings such that each string is one of these lines of this file. So there's like a, you know millions of these lines, and they're going to be lists of them. And this is a data structure that we can't really look at, um, except maybe in a simplified form, but um, we can kind of visualize how this would work. We'd have a, a, a sequence name, and it's connected to a list of strings. So what I'm going to do is, before I return it, I want to, I want to join. I want to use the join attribute and essentially concatenate these in, into the same data structure. So I think I think I can get away with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first loop through each seek name in the sequences. And what I want to do is I want to, how about I'll just do sequence or just seek. I'll just call it seek equals, I'll create this temporary intermediate variable for better or worse, sequences of seek name. And then this is a list. So really what I want to do is I wanted to feed that into join and with the delimiter of the empty string. So I want to do something like this. And I believe I can then say I'll overwrite what currently is stored for sequences and replace it with seek. Now I think actually Python will let me do this in one step. I don't need to create this intermediate seek variable. I can actually just reassign sequences of seek name to this join statement. But this may make it a little bit more clear because it's a little bit weird to both uh, join, join the list of strings and reassign the value of the dictionary all in one step. So I'm going to do it in these two steps just for 
a little bit of added clarity. So I think at this stage, the what it's return will actually be what I'm looking for. And so now if I run it, if I type Python read FASTA and then the DM6, I get my sequences printed out. And I also get their lengths. And you can see how that was extremely fast compared to the string method. And tell you what, let's try that one more time. I'm going to remove this print of the seek name and I'm going to rerun it now. So you can see that's lightning fast. And so it basically created a data structure to store the entire Drosophila genome. So I'm going to do one more thing is I'm going to pipe this into sort. And sort is a Linux tool, a Linux command line tool, um, just like, you know, CP or these other ones. And it has some interesting functionality. I can sort on one of these columns. So I have two columns. I have the seek name and I have the length here. So what I want to do is I want to um, sort on the second column. So there's dash K2. And I want to also sort in, let me just sort in, uh, I don't know, let's just sort uh, generalized numeric, but I can just do numeric and see what happens. And it's going to sort these out. And then the default behavior of sorting with this Linux sort is the same as Python. It's going to sort in ascending order. And if I wanted to, for example, sort in reverse order, I'm going to get the largest first and the smallest at the end. And I can also pipe this into less. If I pipe it into less, then I can see the output and I can see these are the top Drosophila chromosomes, 3R, 3L, 2R. And so those, those uh, few at the top are really the main chromosomes that the vast majority of genes are on. These other ones, in, for the most part, are fragments or contigs that couldn't be properly incorporated into these larger chromosomes. So with that, I hope that made some sense on how to read a large FASTA file using join. And I'll see you next time.